Welcome everybody to the latest installment of MSP Business School. Today we're going to talk about the best and worst and the ugly of 2021. And really, we're going to focus today on, on the problems that some of our clients have expressed to us that they've felt. So as we roll into the holiday season here and everybody kind of winds down, we're going to talk a little bit about the biggest problems we heard and what the next steps might be to improve on them in 2022. With that said, as always, I'd like to formally introduce my co-host, Tim McNeil, Rob Rogers. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing well. How about you? Good, man. Excited to see 2021 come to an end and, and us move into 2022. But I think we'd all agree this was a much better year than 2020. Yes. And uh, 100%. You know, and um, absolutely. You know, I'm excited to think about what the prospects are as more and more people emerge from their cocoons. I think uh, finally on a global status, we're starting to see people out. I recently talked to a customer that was on lockdown for 290 days Ugh. in Australia. Oh, it was what? crazy, crazy. Was their hair all crazy oh, and a was, large beard? You, you're oh spot God. on, Rob. Their <laughs> eyes were. <laughs> wow. It on to a demo. And of course, when I'm doing <laughs> demos with Australia, it's already like 930 at night with me. So this yeah. guy comes on and he's, as he put it, he was looking like Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> he to let me know exactly why he's like you know you're not watching back to the future you're watching a guy that's been on lockdown for 290 days and of oh, course man. i'm looking oh. at and i'm looking at him going good because i'm in the casual gear as well because it's almost 10 o'clock here and uh, yeah. i'm accommodating you so you know it, it was wild but when you really hear about how you know there's been areas that have been wide open for a while obviously us here in the states have pretty much been wide open for about eight nine months at this stage Yep. Then you have yeah. places that have literally been on lockdown for, you know, almost the brutal and, and yeah. God, I don't know. I don't know how wow. they did it, but I guess we all adapt as we need to. Right. But with That's that right. said, I know there's plenty of people that even though 2020 was the year we wanted to kick to the curb, probably still feel that way about 2021. And certainly yeah. some new challenges emerged. You know, last year, I think we did this segment and we really focused around work from home how to secure work from home, how to keep your teams engaged while working yep. remotely. Mm -hmm. Obviously, those stories have moved on to more traditional business challenges. But some of these business challenges, I think, still have a bit of a COVID kick to them, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we're going to start out with is one of the biggest things that we've been hearing about in the marketplace. And I think it echoes what you hear on the news every day about how lower paying jobs are almost impossible to fill. And now white collar jobs are almost impossible to get at 2020 market rates. Yeah. yeah. So the, the yeah. biggest challenge that I know that the three of us are, are hearing from all of our customers, no matter who we're talking to, is the rising cost of talent. You got any thoughts on that, guys? Who wants to kick this one off? Uh, I, I can. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I was just... Uh, just this past weekend, I was having a conversation with uh, some friends of mine, um, actually one of them in the MSP space. And um, it we were talking specifically about how, how salaries have just gone completely out of whack this year. And I, I think what um, when, it, when everybody went to work from home, it really opened up everybody's eyes to say, hey, maybe we don't need to be in the office all the time. And then it opened up other people's eyes to say, well, maybe I don't need to find talent just in my backyard. Maybe I can go across the country. Uh, and, and that I, I think everybody can agree. We've seen more and more all virtual uh, positions, whether it's in sales or whatever, anything uh, in, in the last 18 months. Uh, I think another thing that has happened with that is because people are, um, you know, if, if you're applying to a job that's in New York City, but you're sitting in um, Buffalo, New York, right? You know, those are two very different places, two very different pay scales. Um, but people are now getting more money because they're applying for different positions in different areas of the country, which is causing everything to kind of go out of whack. So for instance, we have a client that is outside of Philadelphia by about 60 miles. Historically, he's been able to find salespeople in the past for uh, the 40 to 42 range for a base salary. It's a, it's a tough go to get anybody to apply for a, uh, I think it's like 48 or 49 now, 
So it's just, and, and this is within like an 18 month period. So it's just, it's amazing how the salaries have kind of climbed over the last 18 to 24 months to me, at least it's been very eye-opening and concerning for a lot of business owners because they have margins that they're trying to stay within mm -hmm. and insert, Hey, inflation, look at you popping your head in, you know, like everything's going up. So it's, I don't know. I said a lot of words there. I hope that made sense, but that no, um, it totally does. Yeah. That's it's been, it's been eye-opening. How about yourself, Rob? Any thoughts there? Man. So, you know, on the salary side, it, people are it, like owners are starting to have to be really creative about what they're doing. And we're talking about the sales side, right? So, you know, Tim and I are always talking about the sales side yeah. as we're discussing MSP sales. And so, you know, now people are starting to break up the positions more, right? And, and hire that BDR or that lead generator from, you know, down in the Southern region because the salaries mm -hmm. are still depressed down there versus where you are in the Northeast. So they're trying to do all these creative ways to get these different positions in because the salaries are going up so fast, but the talent isn't going up as well, yeah. right? So you're paying more for the same level of talent than what you used to. You would think that you would pay, for, in Timmy's example, $48,000 for a highly seasoned MSP experienced rep who knows his book of business, knows his territory, can come in, hit the ground running and start making bonus and commission immediately. That's not what you're paying for with these, you know, these upper salaries. You're paying for that person who's never done it before. And you still have that six, nine, 12, 18 month, you know, ramp up time to get your return on investment back. It's, it's a tough time. It's a, it's a really tough time. Yeah. And just to, in that example, that's a 12 and a half percent difference in salary. But to Rob's point, it's not only is it a difference in salary, it's a different, it's a significant difference in experience uh, as well, which is, uh, it's a crazy combination. It's a crazy combination. Yeah, I mean, look, it's funny, you know, we used to sit there and say that, um, you know, that the MSP market was where people from the corporate world came to uh, to make money. Now it's kind of going the other way. The corporate world, especially if you're able to move into the Fortune 1000s, have really yeah. started offering um, you know pay and, and more importantly benefits that the common MSP just can't compete with. Mm -hmm. For no other you know no other reason. I mean, put in the higher higher cost of healthcare. You know all yeah. the different reasons that go into that that constrict the salary because the benefits even cost more than they once did. You know, conversely, though, you talk to some people on the corporate side and they'll tell you they're having a tough time getting talent because people want to be or they think they can get talent cheaper, I should say, because people are working remotely and they can throw that piece into the, the bucket. So, you know, some of this salary talk will always eternally be be out there as it's a problem for somebody and it's a win for somebody else. It's a this and a that. Oh, but I think I, I think, you know, where I come from on this is <clears throat> the escalating cost of benefits hurts, right? And, and that healthcare cost alone can be very difficult for most MSPs, especially if you're still a relatively small and young one, right? Yeah. You haven't yeah. really gotten to that point where you can absorb those costs. And that constricts your, your ability to pay. The other thing is, I think, really the unrealistic expectations that some of these people have mm -hmm. um, that are in the marketplace today because they heard of a friend who said he got X and you don't know if that friend is telling the truth. I don't think yeah. I've ever shared my W2s with you guys. And I don't think nope. I've ever seen yours. Right. Nope. So, nope. you know, uh, the, the reality is most people do not share that information. Right. Mm. And then I'll, I'll come from a pure engineering front. I think it is getting tougher, right? Because it's tougher to find those jack of all trades that the MSP world needs because they can't position every spot. And those folks don't come out of corporate. They come out of other MSPs. So yeah. it, it's, getting it's getting more competitive to get those resources because those resources are already coming from a place that you live in. They're already getting paid what they get paid. And it yeah. becomes a much bigger challenge. Yeah. <laughs> You're smiling there, Rob. Is it because I'm choking over here? Yeah, uh, just watching Good. you struggle through yeah, that. Just Brian, to, it's just, amazing. You'll know? get through it. You'll get through it. It's okay. <laughs> uh, it, look, here's the thing: enterprise has the ability to pull away MSP, the small and mid-sized businesses, when 
the deals are in the rep's favor, right? When hiring is in the rep's favor, corporate wins because one rep is a small percentage of their overall workforce. So they can offer a little bit more and it's no big hit. But on the SMP space, a 12% increase, like Timmy was talking about, you're, it, that's huge, right? That's and deal. so you're starting, or like we're starting to see, we're losing out on reps. And, and I can't believe this. I'm having reps not show up to final interviews, just not show up, period. I've never had that in my life. And, and now you just have these people, no call, no show. And yeah. you're like, what is going on here? But you know, they're being pulled because it's a it's a employee's market right now into the enterprise space because the enterprise space can offer, can absorb those higher salaries with the bennies and with everything else easier than the uh, SMB space can. So, mm. and, and I think this is 100% a bubble. It, it's going to pop yeah, and it's going to go on. back into employer's market here soon. Yeah. Um, you know, not soon. I, I don't believe that. I think it's going to take a year before that happens, but it's getting there, right? It's, it's just a weird, it's a weird time for sure. Yeah, I think it's a very weird time, but um, you know, the moral of this story, so we can move on to the next challenge that we're facing, salaries are up. Talent's harder to find, but the marketplace is wider if you're taking advantage of remote works for it. So, yeah. you know, you can compensate. I know here in the Northeast, I'm finding people in other regions of the, uh, yes. the globe, and it's really yeah. been a help. So it goes it both ways. Yeah. The next thing that's coming up quite often and has really been proving to be a challenge here in 2021 is, you know, we, we can talk about all the cyber events. And I think we've done a number of uh, podcasts this year that really talk about security and cyber. But really what we're also hearing is just the ability to protect ourselves from those cyber events. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. um, the, when I talk to MSPs, especially since they're more in the account management role, more and more they're being asked to engage in the insurance reviews as people apply for cyber liability. And now because they're putting their names on it and we've seen liability coming down to the MSP level, you know, they're being a little bit stricter than they may have been in the past. Yeah. And obviously events like what happened to Kaseya this year really bring yeah. to light that the problem that's out there is not just an MSP problem or a consumer problem or an insurance company problem. It's all of our problem because there's not yet a belt tightened around the laws for cyber insurance and cybersecurity at a federal level. You know, states yeah. are starting to mandate different things. You, we've spoken about it previously here on this podcast, but, you know, three states, Ohio, Utah, and Connecticut, where I'm based out of, have actually um, implemented laws that said, hey, if you follow some particular cybersecurity guidelines, work to some specific frameworks, you can avoid punitive damage. And for the insurance company, that puts a fence around the claim. So now yeah. you can actually kind of constrict what the cost is going to be. But that's only in a few states and far and yeah. wide. People are finding it hard to get cyber insurance and MSPs are starting to even question what work they should take on or how long they should stay with a customer who repeatedly says no to their recommendations. You know, what are your guys thoughts on this? You know, what have you been experiencing or hearing from the sales side of the house? Well, I, I think uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, we we talk we've talked to clients of ours over the last you know, since COVID started, obviously, and um, uh, some of them have actually said, "I can't imagine why anybody would want to start an MSP now." Mainly because there's so many moving parts, there's so many opportunities to to. Uh, to if if you're new, if you're just starting out, right? If you're if you're a mature MSP, these are things that you should, in theory, be already you know worked into your your organization, and, and you should be on a good spot. But more, if you're just a new MSP starting out, man, it's a tough go because it, it it's funny. We were, Rob and I were at an ESCI event uh, just last week, and and I happen to be talking to somebody that. They don't use ConnectWise. They don't use Autotask. They don't use any any form of monitoring specifically. When they sign up a client, they say, hey, client, you can use these monitoring tools, but you have to pay for it. We will manage it, but you have to pay for it. I thought that was really interesting because it took some of the onus off of them and put it on the on the client 
it's almost the opposite of what I heard, you know, one of the large insurers, uh, property and casualty insurers, nothing to do with cyber insurance, but they've now said in their agent offices, most of the common MSP RMM tools are no longer welcome and that they had to uh, exit them from their system. So, you know, without naming names, some of the big names in the RMM space, they, they put out a press release to all their branch offices and said, if your providers are using X, Y, and Z, please remove them from all systems by such and such a date. So you're seeing that, uh, that, that concept of we want to own our, you know, eat our own dog food, own our own tools, you know, and that may become what the wave of the future is. Another thing I'm seeing more and more is MSP is looking at becoming more advisory and outsourcing yep. the services that they're doing to other yep. people. We had Michael yep. Green from Solutions Granted on here, and I'm hearing more and more people leveraging his service for security. What a good guy he is. Yeah, he's such a good guy. You know, yeah. years ago, everybody started moving out uh, help desking. And again, if we're going to talk to some of the folks that we've had on the show, you know, that was uh, Jason over at Mission Control, who, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who was providing those types mm -hmm. of services. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing more and more that the new upstart MSPs are saying, look, I don't want to own the whole liability. I want to have yeah. a liability chain with me as well. And I'm going to build my MSP where we're the advisors, we're the point contact. We might still drive point. Maybe we're doing some level two, level three activities, but we're going to take everything that really needs to be 24 seven and analyzed at a scale that we can't build to today and <laughs> outside. Right. So yep. that's another trend I'm seeing. So that the responsibility becomes more shared as opposed to the MSP owning it lock, stock and barrel. Yeah. So one of the cool things that I saw from what I, you know, I was having this discussion with one of our MSPs and uh, the, the cyber insurance policy, right? You know, that, that form, that worksheet that you have to fill out. Um, he is outsourcing even that. He is not even mm -hmm. allowing that to be a discussion. He's outsourcing that and making that be a paid service outside of normal scope and putting it into his contract, saying that filling out this paperwork is outside of our scope and we will be using a third party. And uh, he said he just didn't want to deal with the liability of it. And he said he will do the work in scope, mm. but the, the ex explanation of the worksheet is not going to be in, in scope. And that is going to be somebody outside of his purview. And I thought, wow, you know what? They, that's, a, that's a safe way of going out. I don't know if I would do it myself, I, but I was like, wow, that is a really novel yeah. way of doing it. Well, you know, yeah. it, it's the, you know, we used to say it about Microsoft, you know, at certain products, you know, when they put out Windows Defender, everybody was like, well, that's like the rooster watching the hen house, right? It's the same kind of thing here. If you are auditing yourself, you're taking on both ends of the responsibility. And if, yeah. you, and if you proclaim a gap doesn't exist, but yet it did, and you were the service provider holding it, now you're it the comes pocket. off, but yeah. now it also comes off like you're, you're, egregiously yeah. hiding it almost comes off it could be considered yeah. insurance fraud whereas if yeah. you put it to a third party they may discover things that you got to do but now you can take on that you know that responsibility to get it resolved and you're not being fraudulent in the process right yeah i, I totally yeah. agree yeah i think and it, it, oh go ahead i'm sorry Rob. no please go ahead I was going to say, I think it takes a pretty secure MSP, though, that knows that they're doing a, a relatively good job. There's no perfect one out there, right? But they're yeah. doing a relatively good job to be confident in doing that, too, because that's somebody saying, hey, I want you to litmus test me. Find my holes because I'd rather fix them and make them better than say that they're there and not really be identifying it and then opening up Pandora's box and making myself live. Yeah, I, right? I, I so totally that's, agree, Brian. That's totally agree. cool, man. You know, yeah. I, mean, I think more and more MSPs should... Uh, take that to heart but a lot of them don't like to give up at the almighty dollar but, yeah you know, it, it, i, I yeah. hear you man yeah, but like, uh that pocket they're coming after the pockets spend right? a dollar save 500 you know yep. <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's yeah. one of those right yeah 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 so that's interesting so you know i think cyber liability is going to be an area that we continue to hear more about as we go into the new year i'm certainly seeing it's popping onto the agendas of a lot of the conferences yeah and that was not a concept that was really spoken of much last year i mean it was out there but it wasn't to the extreme that it is now mm -hmm. and um you know i think uh we'll we'll you know, we'll all hope that we see the right things going, but I really do like that concept of independent third party. It's the same thing that our even all the way down do. to that. Yeah. yeah. If you're going yeah. ISO and you're the MSP for a company that's ISO, all you can do is help them prepare. But ultimately, yeah. the auditors got to come in and do their job anyway. So 
Yeah. Let's touch upon a quick one. I know we're starting to run out of time, but this is one that obviously goes into many of our discussions in the past, and that's just customer acquisition. I think this is a problem that we've heard about in 2020, we'll talk about in 2021, and will not go away in 2022. But I think the problems associated with customer acquisition have obviously changed a little bit with the hybrid workforce and, and all the electronic tools we can hide behind. <clears throat> so, you know, Timmy, when we talk hunting, we talk to you first. So what do you think? Yeah. Uh, so I, I know in the beginning of the year, we, we talked a lot about how we thought there were going to be a lot of office moves and people downgrading, et cetera. And, and I think generally speaking, there was, or yeah. has been a, a, a large push. You know, I can just speak from personal experience. Rob and I have recently shut down our office in Connecticut because we found that we were, we were, we were running along just fine, all virtual. And I think there's a lot of people who are finding the same thing. I will I'll fully admit, although there, there has been an uptick in those kinds of projects and people moving, it hasn't, it, did, it like admittedly, it didn't translate to like all these net new logos, like I had expected them to. And it's not like I, I was, it's not like I was sitting here thinking, oh my God, people are going to close twice as many deals. Um, I would say on average deals have stayed about the same from a close, from a close ratio uh, or from a consistency of closing while mixing those in, which leads me to believe that there are not as many people moving right now, right? Because some people almost have to move if they're downgrading, if they're doing that large project, that's an, an opportune time for somebody to switch an IT or an MSP vendor because you know that's they that tends to happen around larger projects, right? Um, so I, I I hope that in 2022 shit starts to get normal, and we can and we can go back to the normal people moving, the normal churn, the uh, the normal everything that that we were accustomed to, and I think everybody looks forward to getting back to. So. Yeah. It, it, what I'm seeing on my side is, uh, you know, because people are understanding more of this uh, remote workforce, there's going to be a lot more co-managed opportunities with larger companies. Mm -hmm. And so I'm seeing, you know, on my side, I, I'm seeing a an uptick in larger seat appointments and deals closing, yeah. right? Yeah. It, not as many of the SMB side, but on the 75 to 200 side, right? Where they, they're realizing they don't need as much of an on-site IT workforce. They can co-manage with an outsourced IT company that, you know, that, that they can work with. And so I think customer acquisition is going to go upstream more to uh, bigger logos than traditionally what we were, you know, used to seeing. So that's what I think, Brian, is what we're going to see on that side. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to follow your thoughts on that and say, I agree with both of you. You know, the, the biggest thing I'm seeing is, you know, like at always, you got to hustle and you got to be more creative in the hustle, right? You know, we, we've talked about it. LinkedIn puts on new constraints. You got to find a new way there. Cold yep. calling, yeah. you're not getting people on the line. And obviously with remote workforces, they can hide a little bit even further, but you got to find another alternative way. Sales is a game of innovation. Customer acquisition will continue to be a game of acquisition. And those that stay consistent win. And those that get erratic or let the, let the forces beat them will lose. And, and that'll be consistent no matter what the year. So that's mm -hmm. my closing comment on that. So those are really the big three that we heard about in 2021 from RC. And, you know, mm -hmm. certainly if you feel like we've missed some listeners, let us know, you know, email us, uh, hit us up on LinkedIn, hit us up on Facebook. We've got pages in both spots and mm -hmm. let us know what you've experienced in 2021. So we can, uh, you know, we can chat about it here and see what we can do to help. Sure. So with that yeah. said, Rob, as always, I'm going to turn it to you to bring us home. Sure, sure thing, man. Uh, look for anyone that's looking to get in touch with you, uh, touch with us. As Brian said, you know, please reach out to us on MSPBusinessSchool.com uh, or you know, YouTube or any other places that you know you find our podcast. And again, like we always say every single week, uh, please send us over some questions that you want us to talk about, or if you have a case study that you're working on right now to trying to close a prospect or get yourself into a prospect and you're having troubles, we would love to help you. Absolutely, uh, you mm -hmm. know, shoot us over an email and we'll we'll help you out. We'll announce it on air. And 
and we'll kind of talk through it and how we would handle it. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. We'd love to help you out. Uh, with that, fellas, as always, have a great day. And until next time. Take care, guys. All right. Thanks.